In this third Visi video, we're going to cover video routing and also basic user interface construction. First, let's look at video routing. As we saw in video one, the X fader effect is great for mixing two streams of video together. With video routing, we can really extend that idea. Here's an example of routing used to make a video stream which reacts to an audio track. Let's start with a patch with two players and a zoomer in it. Let's load them up with some videos and start them both playing. Notice that we only have one input into the zoomer, but what we want is to have a way to get an interesting mix of both videos in there. Unlock the patch. Let's go into the Visi control folder and add the two switcher module. Notice that the two switcher module has two inputs just like the X fader does. Let's patch this in. You can see that the two switcher is a little like the X fader, only instead of doing a blend of the videos, it does a hard switch between them. Let's patch this into the zoomer. Now what we want is a cool way to automate the switching. Here's a module which will let you use audio to drive your video patch. It's called the follower. It's in VisiGen Follower. You can see the audio files available to Max if you click on the audio files saved search in the file browser. Let's load up a drum loop and get it playing. I'm going to lock the patch, start the loop, loop it, and I can adjust the gain till I can see the meters moving. The follower module looks at the incoming audio's level and turns that into a controller for Visi. So if I unlock the patch here, I can take the control output from follower and get it to drive the two switcher. Lock the patch. Okay, it's not doing much, so let's adjust the breakpoint spot so that we can get the drum beat triggering the video switch. There are a bunch of multi-channel switching and routing options in the control folder, and they can all be automated. Have a play with them and see what you can come up with. Now I'd like to talk a little about user interface construction in Max. You've probably seen by now that you can make Visi patches which include a ton of effects, generators and players, and your patch window can get pretty full. Here's how you can simplify the way you control a complex patch using a built-in feature of Max called Presentation Mode. Presentation Mode lets me choose which parts of my patch are visible. Here's a simple patch with two players, a viewer, an X fader, a starter, and a fader controlling the X fader. Let's click on the viewer to select it, and then control click or right click on Windows to bring up a contextual menu. Choose Add to Presentation. When you do this, you'll see that the module gains a pinkish kind of a border. Now we need to flip to presentation mode to see what we have. You turn on presentation mode by clicking on the fourth icon from the left on the status bar. It looks like a small easel. What you'll see is that all of the modules and patch cords disappear except for the viewer module. In this mode, you can move the module around, but it never disturbs the position it had in edit mode. You can see that the way the patch works doesn't change. The only thing that changes is what you see. Now in presentation mode, we don't have any way to change the crossfade. Let's add the fader to the presentation view. 
control click or right click, add to presentation, and now we can see that in presentation mode as well. Let's add the starter module to the presentation mode. Now we can arrange all of our user interface elements in a tidy, compact space. One problem is that the next time we use this patch, we may not remember what the fader module is for. We need to add a label to the module, but that's not something that is built into the Visi system. This is a place where we will depend on standard Max programming, and we will use the comment object to add labels to our patch. The easiest way to add a comment is to position your mouse where you want it and hit the C key on your keyboard. Now we can type the name of the fader object. I'm going to call it crossfade. And then click outside the object to complete the editing. This completes our three-part video introduction to Visi and Max MSP. We hope you have fun with this set and we'd really like to hear how you get on programming with the Visi system. Please feel free to send us comments, suggestions, and your best Visi patches. Have fun!